online, you have as much time as you want because you won't see me waving at you. No, I'm kidding, of course. People are, <laughs> people are uh, angry. I'm kidding. So please, uh, Thomas, the, the floor is yours. You have 15 minutes, 15, one, five minutes presentation, and maybe I will try and wave at one point. Thanks. I see. Thank you, Nico, for, for the opportunity to participate in online this conference and also to the other organizers. Uh, my talk today uh, is about a proposal for an implementation of a topological justice and traveling wave parametric amplifier. And uh, this is in collaboration with uh, Alvaro, with Juanjo, Alejandro, and Diego, all at Madrid in my, in my same institution. Well, I start by, by recalling that uh, microwave signals coming from superconducting quantum circuits are typically very weak, and therefore one requires an amplifier to detect them. And in this quantum amplifier process, uh, there is always a gain factor G and some added noise N uh, by the amplifier. And therefore, we also require isolator elements in order to protect the quantum system from the noise coming from the amplifier. Okay, one of the most advanced amplifiers so far in the market are Joseon traveling wave parametric amplifiers, which are built of arrays of Joseon junctions, as shown here. Uh, using uh, dispersion engineering, these this devices have shown very, a very nice performance, like with gains above 20 dB, with a noise that is near quantum limited, and a very large bandwidth of, on the order of gigahertz. And of course, these devices work very nicely, but would still even better to make an upgrade to them and make them to amplify non-reciprocally. This means that if you send a signal in the input, the signal is unidirectionally amplified from left to right, without any reflection and also without uh, backward noise. And therefore, we can avoid having these isolator elements in the circuits and we can integrate the quantum system together with the pre-amplifiers, quantum amplifiers in the same chip. The problem is that this is not so easy to do. And so far this has been realized experimentally only in narrow band devices, uh, like as shown in these uh, references. But in this talk, I want to show that it is indeed possible to do a broadband and directional amplification using the concept of topological amplification introduced in these seminal papers. Here, uh, the challenge is to engineer artificial gauge fields and non-local pumping terms in these kind of devices. But I want to show that this is possible with the current superconducting circuit technology. Okay, so the implementation we propose looks like this on the left. I show the surrounding circuit scheme to realize this amplifier. And on the right, the quantum optics model that is realized by this circuit in an abstract form, let's say. So it has three main ingredients, our proposal. The first is in blue. This is a Joseon injunction array, where Joseon injunctions that are depicted here with crosses, they induce a cross care couplings between sites of this form, and also self care couplings on each, on every side, okay? And capacitors induce a linear coupling between sites, JA. And the, the second important ingredient is to uh, couple every side of the Joseon injunction array to input output ports. And not just the first one to send the signal and, and retrieve the, the output signal at the, uh, the final side, but actually in all of them. And this is because we need to, to have a constant or an homogeneous decay on all sides to stabilize the topological phase that I show later. And the third and last ingredient is to couple this Jason injunction array to a, a linear array of uh, superconducting linear resonators, as I show here, which uh, have the standard uh, or linear capacity uh, hopping between sides and also it couples capacitively to the, to the JJ array. Okay, and the trick here to make the system topological is to do the four-way mixing via the linear array, as I show in more details in the, in the follow. So the, the, thing, the, the key here is to break actually time reversal symmetry in the JJ array by driving on the auxiliary array and engineering the boundaries of this array. So we have input ports in the auxiliary array only in the first side and in the last side. And we have three conditions to break the time reversal symmetry. And the first one is to drive strongly only in the first side here in V1 on resonance. And with this, we will put a lot of photons in the, in the auxiliary array. Okay, the second condition is to have a very off resonant coupling to the other array. And because of this, all the photons that enter in the first side, they will travel to the right 
on the auxiliary array we jump without jumping to the other we just on the red part and when they are approaching to the other boundary we we set the decay of this uh, antenna here or this uh, transmission line gamma to be exactly equal to the hopping jb and if we do that there will be a perfect impedance matching on the boundaries and all the photons going to the right here will leak out without any reflection in this auxiliary array and because of that uh, they, they will be in steady state. They will be a classical running wave uh, uh, built in this auxiliary array moving from left to right. And you will have a well-defined phase uh, five equal to pi over two in this case. Okay, and this is very important because this will induce an effective drive so that we can eliminate these uh, auxiliary cavities and the effective action of this is to induce a, a, a a uh, gradient drive on all sides of the JJ array that has constant and homogeneous uh, amplitude and still has this phase five, pi over two coming from the from the auxiliary array. Okay, and the trick is to use this uh, effective drive to do four-way mixing on the JJ array. So we have a strong coupling, and we can displace in this four-way mixing. We can displace uh, locally all. Uh, modes of the of the JJ array here in this form, we have some mean displacement alpha and some small quantum fluctuations around this, this mean field. And what is very nice is that the same phase phi coming from the from the pump actually provides perfect phase matching for the for the JJ array, even without doing dispersion engineering. So actually here the system is completely homogeneous, it's assumed to be homogeneous. And the as a result of this, the mean field displacement also will be homogeneous and given by the still order equation in steady state that can be solved uh, numerically in a very simple way. Okay, so now regarding the, the fluctuations, when we have a strong pump, uh, we can, the dynamics becomes mainly linear and it's given by this uh, quantum Langevin equation where it has a local decay a kappa on all sides here, given by this term, and in the coherent part, we have a parametric amplifier Hamiltonian, which has two types of terms. Actually, the first one is conversion to this kappa, are parametric pumping terms, like two photon driving terms in the system, and uh, they will have two types of this term. One will be local parametric pumping terms, conversion to JS on each side, which will be coming from linearizing the the self and the cross kernel linearities and alpha squared is the number of photons in the, in the pump. And there will also will be a non-local pump, JC, here, coming from the, for linearizing the cross kernel linearity. And in the, there will be also photon conserving terms, in proportion to M, which will be just standard uh, on-site detuning and uh, hopping between sites. And very importantly, this hopping is complex and the, the same phase coming from the pump that I showed you before enters here as an artificial gauge field that breaks the time reversal symmetry, the dynamics of these fluctuations. So this, uh, this gauge field in combination with the constant decay kappa and with the non-local pump in terms of JC allows the system to go to a, a topological a steady state where there is directional amplification. This means that photon centering here will actually get amplified from left to right and it will be accumulated on the last side. This I will show in the following. And to describe this uh, in more details, it's very convenient to, to introduce this non-emission dynamical matrix, which comes from writing this same, the same equation in a matrix form. Okay, so this non-emission matrix contains all the coherent and the dissipative couplings and allows to de describe in a unified way the spectral and the topological properties of the system. And that's why it's very useful. Uh, okay, so uh, the Green's function matrix, which is basically the inverse of this non-emission matrix, uh, describes all the amplifying properties of the, of the system. So for instance, the gain, if you send a signal in the first side and you retrieve it in the side J, is given by the modulus square of this Green function. And the reverse gain, so for a signal propagating in the opposite direction, is, has almost the same form, but uh, it depends on the Green function with the reverse order, IJ. You see, so from here, already we can see that if we want to get non-reciprocal amplification, the green function must be asymmetric, basically. Okay, but for what kind of parameters in our system we can get this asymmetric uh, green function? 
And for this, we use a connection of the open quantum system that is our amplifier to a topological band theory. Okay, this was developed in these three papers in our group. And um, basically, what we do here uh, is to construct an extended Hamiltonian, this emission, from the non emission Hamiltonian in this form. Okay, so this, this other H is by definition emission. So since it's an emission, we can apply all the, we can do it as a, uh, let's say, it can be in some cases a topological insulator system, and we can apply topological band theory to it in a telephone way, in a standard form. So uh, we can diagonalize it, and when this extended system is in a topological non-trivial phase, for instance, for these parameters of our system, uh, then this system will present uh, zero energy modes and a topological uh, inside this topological bank, uh, bank gap. Okay, and uh, associated to every these non-zero modes, there will be uh, edge states actually that are exponentially localized on the boundaries of this. Kind of artificial uh, system, but this implies that we show in this uh, paper that in the physical system, in the real amplifier, this means that when this happens, this means that the green function has this exponential spatial dependence with respect to the first side. So they depend on this, uh, where this theta is the correlation length of the edge states, and this implies that if we that the gain and the reverse gain will be exponentially enhanced when we have this topological phase in the system, and the reverse game will eventually attenuate, actually. So this is what we call topological amplification, which is non-reciprocal, but also exponentially enhanced. OK, this is the essence of topological amplification. And now I want to show how this well, how this performs in a real experiment with supervolting circuits and, and kind of realistic parameters. OK, so here I show the gain and the reverse gain for uh, amplifying a signal a frequency close to the pump, okay, a little bit away from the pump. And here we can see that uh, the gain actually increases ex nearly exponentially from, from left to right uh, as a function of the side, uh, number of sites in the array. We can see already for 12 sites, we can reach almost 40 dB of amplification. And for attenuation, it's also exponentially suppressed. This is in dB, uh, up to le less than minus 40 dB. And for more or less realistic parameters, the problem is that I, have, I haven't shown this yet, but the, the gain increases exponentially, but also the, the noise. So actually, we need to stop at four sites only, because then to avoid the saturation of the, this device. So for the, these parameters that we choose, like say 60, minus 61 dBm of uh, uh, pumping, we get uh, 280 photons okay, in steady state in the array. And this should be much larger than the, the fluctuations. So we need to stop at eight, but still we can get 25 dB of amplification and minus 35 dB of, uh, let's say, isolation in the other direction. And uh, keeping these eight sites, we can now study the, the, the bandwidth response of this uh, amplifier and also the added noise as a function of frequency, which is basically the total noise added by the amplifier as a function of frequency divided by the uh, gain at that frequency, okay? So the gain as a function of frequency is in blue and the other noise is in red. And in blue, we can see that the, we can reach this 25 dB amplification uh, close to the pump frequency, but still we can get a bandwidth uh, on the order of 2.2 times J, uh, which in our, this system, which is J 0.8 gigahertz for the parameters we chose, we can get almost two gigahertz of bandwidth for uh, more than 20 dB of amplification. And regarding the noise, uh, for the same uh, frequencies, we, the limit here in our convention is one for the other noise, so we can get 1.3, so almost near quantum limited um, amplification here. And the, the central frequency is tunable because we can, if we could tune, for example, by external flux, the frequency of the, the auxiliary arrays, uh, we can tune this, and the moment is 5.5 gigahertz. Okay, and the last I want to mention is that since this uh, topological amplification, direction amplification has a topological origin, it is robust against a disorder in the system. Actually, we assume it is homogeneous, but can have some uh, disorder. So, and this protection comes from the chiral symmetry of this uh, extended Hamiltonian that is always present by construction. So it does not depend on the specific parameters of the system. And therefore, if the system is actually robust to all parameters, as we show here. So we, here we calculate the added noise and the gain at the last side as a function of the 
a noise in all parameters, in phi, in the phase, in the tuning, in kappa, hopping, and the pumping terms. And we can see that uh, almost, at least for 10% error uh, disorder, this is almost doesn't change from minus 1.3 to 1.4, basically. And even can, in some parameters, can, uh, uh, can be even 30% disorder. And the gain is similar, and even for certain noise, the gain can, can improve, increase, and others the gain can reduce. So but only slightly, even for 10%. And this, this kind of effect has been seen in other topological systems. OK, that was all I wanted to tell you. Uh, so in summary, uh, with this proposal, we think that uh, implementing a topological descent traveling wave parametric amplifier is within experimental reach with this kind of uh, setup. The key to make this topological is to couple the array to an auxiliary uh, resonator array and implement a gauge field and a phase matching via this. I have shown that for more or less realistic parameters, we can get a good uh, gain and good reverse gain, near quantum limited noise and bandwidth of order two gigahertz for only eight sites actually can be very efficient. You don't need a very big uh, system actually and can be homogeneous without so much non-local engineering and it's robust to disorder. And this result will be very soon available in, in the archive. And for regarding the outlook, uh, I want to comment that if it's, po it's possible to build this kind of device, one could get rid of these bulky isolators. Uh, also, because the system is small, let's say on the order of 10 sites, one maybe study the saturation effects from first principles, like incorporating the nonlinearities in the system completely. And also, that this system can also be interesting from a many body perspective. And one can study emergent uh, state state topological phases in this system, uh, for instance, with different winding numbers and so on. And as I show here as an example of a, a, another preprint that we will put uh, soon in the archive, uh, studying all these these uh, features. So thank you very much uh, to you for your attention and to my collaborators in Madrid. Thank you. I see many hands. I think Denis was the first. So hi, uh, thank you for the talk. Hi. Uh, um, in this type of uh, two paths with two lines, uh, you have generally uh, one um, uh, classical line, the one in red in your last slide, uh, and on this one you pump, and uh, on the other one you put your signal. And you, of course, because it's four ways mixing, you have idlers, and uh, the, the, the signal and the pump make a first idler. Then the pump and the first idler make a second, make a second idler. The second idler and the pump make a third idler. And you have a series of, of idlers like this that can, that can uh, get the, the power uh, from the pump. How many idlers mm -hmm. have you considered in your calculation? Uh, how many orders of idler, you say? Yeah. Yeah, I think we, we do the calculation in, in, in real space, so to say. So in principle, I, I think it, all the orders are, are taken, taken into account. So at least in the, when you linearize the system. Okay. See? So, what so, I understand. So the, the, the gain that you quote is with all idlers taken in, into consideration. Yes, exactly. Yes, so all idlers, they, they enter in that in the noise because we are uh, operating the system as a phase insensitive amplifier. Let's say, and the idler at the end uh, enters in the noise, in the noise part, let's say, the, the other noise. Thank you. Welcome. And next one is Carles. Hi, thank you for your talk. I, if I understood when the impedance matching of the red line provides both the chirality to the system, but also the phase matching condition for the uh, traveling wave. So how yes. sensitive you are to this phase matching condition before you are losing the, the phase matching on the blue line and then the, the, the amplifier stops working? I see. Uh, so in principle, uh, how sensitive you say? So we, we assume that the, what is very important is, is that the, the gamma here, the decay in the last side has to be equal to the, to the hopping in this, in this, the linear hopping in the array. So this actually, we, we can show that when this happens, we can get an exact solution of this of this uh, running wave that appears. And if you are away from this, let's say you have a small disorder, a small perturbation, 
then you will get a small uh, change, a small difference in the phi, in the phase. So you will get pi over two and some small uh, disorder, let's say. But then later at the end, we, we phenomenologically uh, 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 change this disorder by actually more than 10%. And we, we show that the, the topological phase is, is robust you see? because from the topological protection. So, so, so you would you say are, that it, as long as gamma and um, JB, they are within a 10% window similar? Yeah, more you're, or less, maybe okay. even a bit more, but 10% window, I think is, uh, yeah, for sure it works. Yeah. Okay, I think you had a question as well. Yeah, a very quick question. I, I didn't really understand if I have to pump independently all of these eight nodes. Uh, no, no, you just, you pump the, the first side in the B and uh, the, the, the same chain here will, will be behave as a waveguide that this will distribute the pump to the A sides. Okay, so, all, not, the blue, so all the blue arrows at the top, uh, those are not pumped. That's just matched to a 50 ohm impedance. Exactly. That's exactly. just dissipation. Exactly. exactly. Okay. Yeah. I saw a hand, Miko, it was you. Yeah, I was kind of curious about the uh, reverse gain as function of the fre of frequency offset. You showed the forward gain to go to 25 dB, but and the added noise you showed to be 1.3 uh, photons, but you didn't show the reverse gain. Mm -hmm. um, does it behave nicely? Like you, like you said that the reverse gain is about minus 20, 35 dB um, at that sort of optimal point, but is yeah, that exactly. kind yeah. of staying low when you go to offset in frequency? Yeah, even gets lower. So it, okay. it's maximum at the at the center, it's maximum. And then in frequency gets lower. So I, I had the plot actually, but I took it out because of time. But right, uh, okay. Uh, maybe, um, yeah, I, I but show I, it actually. I'm, I'm also wondering like, and you define that to be the gain for the to the reverse direction if you put signal at that frequency and what's the power coming out at the other end at the same frequency, right? So that's kind of, yeah. but then how about the idlers, et cetera, like the, what Dennis was kind of curious that when you have, like if you think about your tool pa now, you have to the reverse direction, you have lots of noise power coming out at the very broad frequency band. So are you, are with all of those frequencies, do you have that isolation or is it only close to the, close to that frequency point? And then when you look at the idlers that those frequencies generate, are those idlers also at low power? Uh, no, I think the idler is at, at high power, I would say. So because the idler also gets amplified as always in, in parametric amplification, I think. So the, but this I'm is thinking, a different I'm talking frequency. about the reverse direction that. Ah, the reverse that, direction. That, ah, the, yeah, 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 I see. So, yeah, yeah, also the eyelid gets suppressed. Yeah, both, both, mm -hmm. both. Yeah, because it's just the properties of the, the screen functions. So the, yeah, but in reverse direction, idler and, and, and signal, let's say, get uh, suppressed. And in the uh, direct direction, uh, direct direction, the left to right direction, uh, they get amplified exponentially. But uh, noise, signal, and idler, but in different proportions. So one can find uh, certain parameters where, where the noise is still, the noise, uh, the, let's say the noise to signal ratio is, is good enough. Okay, well, thank you. Welcome. Okay, thank you, Thomas, uh, again. Thank you. And thank you to all the, the speakers of this morning's session. I think it's now time for lunch break, long-awaited lunch break, I should say.